What's up everyone, it's Brad with the HODL Fandom. I was looking at some mobile gaming financials and I found some interesting numbers that might bust a common bullish idea of how much revenue Ecomi can generate with gamification. Now it's not all negative, I'll explain how I believe this can lead to big profits down the road. So stick around for that and we'll dig into the numbers and analysis in today's video. Let's get into it. I was looking at the mobile app numbers for another topic, but I started going down this rabbit hole as I do sometimes. So let me show you the numbers and my thought process. So I started pulling in the user base numbers for popular mobile games to see what the potential growth of VV could look like. And the numbers look great at first glance. Pokemon Go had over 230 million users in its first year, which sounds so bullish when you think about the licenses VV has, the popularity of those licenses, and all the connection between Pokemon and Ecomi. You get the same bullish feeling when you look at some other mobile games out there, Minecraft Mobile, PUBG Mobile, Roblox, Clash of Clans, and Candy Crush. Now all these figures are in millions of users. We currently have a user base of around 2 million users, and Ecomi is projected to pull in $1 billion in revenue this year. Now, I believe the common sentiment out there is, once Vivi creates its game, it can gain a user base similar to that of Pokemon Go, so 100x the current user base. The misconception here is that we will also gain more or less 100x in revenue, burns, profits, etc. From what I can see, that is not exactly the case. Let's pull up those user base numbers again, and now let's also pull up the annual revenue numbers. Let's look at Pokemon Go. In 2016, they had 232 million users and 830 million in revenue. Revenue dropped off the following year, but steadily increased each year since then. Assuming Ecomi hit their targets for the year, how can Ecomi have 1% of the user base compared to Pokemon Go, yet pull in more revenue? 1%. I believe the answer is the revenue model for gaming is significantly different than that of a marketplace app, which is what VV is right now. So once Ecomi develops their game, we may see a big jump in users on the gaming side. Now that won't directly equate to a proportional gain in revenue because you're comparing apples to oranges, different revenue models, different revenue margins, and different kinds of products. It's like comparing a jewelry store revenue to an arcade, which probably gets a ton more foot traffic, but also gets paid in quarters. Now, why would gaming have lower revenue margins? Firstly, gaming, especially mobile gaming, needs a free-to-play aspect to it. And the revenue largely comes from microtransactions. Not everyone wants to pay in order to play a mobile game. And developers walk this fine line of putting in paywalls or grind walls before churn skyrockets, before people just outright quit the game. Now, I have a personal example with this. I quit Madden Ultimate Team maybe like four years ago, uh, four years ago or so. There were a ton of grind walls out there, but there was one in particular uh, with some tournament that required, or uh, an event that required 30 wins within three days. Now combine that with weekend league, you played something like 70 games over a weekend, and you had to do that multiple weekends in a row. So I did all that, but after a while I was just like, EA Sports, my thumbs are numb, they're killing me, and the reward wasn't worth my time because they're trying to force you to pay. So I quit the game and I never, I never turned back. Now EA are on the extreme side of things, egregiously gouging their user base. But even EA, with their user base over 200 million users, they pulled in about 1.6 billion in microtransaction revenue. Again proving my point that even with the most egregiously greedy gaming company out there, the proportions to revenue to user base don't add up. Which again further proves my point, you can't expect 100 billion in revenue when the user base goes 100x, especially when that is driven by the gaming side. So since we're talking about EA, let's take this even further and prove even if Ecomi tries to put in microtransactions to increase the gaming revenue, they will probably be minimal. And we'll take a look at a famous case of Disney versus EA. Now, EA has the uh, has the access to, to Disney licenses to create games with their Star Wars IP. But when they created Battlefront 2, a first person shooter game using Star Wars characters, they put in a ton of loot boxes and paywalls. The community was outraged, Disney hated that. They did not want gambling associated with their IPs and EA was forced to remove them. 
If we want to see Disney IPs involved in Ecomi's gaming, I'm willing to bet we won't see many microtransactions. And definitely, definitely no loot boxes. So with all that put together, once Ecomi develops their game, we may see a big jump in users on the gaming side, but that won't directly and immediately be a proportional gain in revenue. Now this all might sound kind of negative, I wouldn't say it's that, I'd say it's realistic based on the numbers, the real numbers and revenue numbers shown in real world mobile gaming. I'd also like to point out that that's only one aspect, that's just revenue. Ecomi is going to implement Omi to NFT, the Viviverse, Master Collector program, Omi utility program, all that stuff. And all of that will add buying pressure to the token and demand for the collectibles. I'd argue that those will have a more immediate positive impact for collectors and investors. Even with the revenue the way it is, Omi burns will be very impactful, especially given the market conditions that we have today. But that is dependent largely on if and when we get buybacks all caught up with. Let me be very, very clear. I am bullish long term on Ecomi because all these things will prove themselves to be catalysts in due time. I just think the expectation when looking at revenue comparing to Pokemon Go, that needs to be toned down just a little bit. There is, however, a bullish aspect to this. We just need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, and this is how I see it. Vivi, which is Ecomi's NFT marketplace for premium collectibles, that will succeed. We may see a jump in users from, what is it now, two to about maybe four to five million users in 2022, as well as a billion dollars in revenue. Now, this is the high margin product for Ecomi. When gamification launches, I believe the gaming side, just looking at it independently, that will be a success as well. I do believe games will have a bigger outreach, they're less costly to participate in, and the game, if it's fun, will also have a higher retention rate and thus a larger user base. Now, their revenue margins are just a bit lower, but again, still very lucrative. In my opinion, the big and exponential revenue potential here is converting those gamers into collectors, drawing that intersection in this Venn diagram. That is the massive moneymaker here, converting the larger gamer base into collectors, converting the sales from lower margin to higher margin. That is the key in my opinion, but I think that will take a bit of time. Immediately, I got two questions. Number one, can this conversion happen? Absolutely. We've already seen this, uh, this VV effect where digital collectors are now becoming physical collectors and vice versa. The second question is, how do you grow that intersection? How do we maximize the higher margin products? We get NFTs involved in games. Now, I, I explored some of the ideas in my renting and burning video I published about uh, about a month ago, and I covered my thoughts on what renting and burning could look like in Vivi, which I pulled from research in real world gaming. A little side note, if you watch that video of mine and you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you notice that NBA Top Shot just announced they're introducing burning of their collectibles. Now, how they're doing it is very similar to what I mentioned in my video, and I do think Vivi will introduce something similar as well. I'll link that video down below for you to check out and hey, let's see what other predictions can come true. Anyways, how do we maximize the higher margin Vivi marketplace? We give the NFTs exposure and use them in games. Now, this can't be a requirement like a paywall. Users won't like it, Disney won't like it, so no paywalls. One idea is you can use a free generic looking character or you could rent or buy a nice skin. In this case, the nice skin could be a Marvel Mighty's character. Now, you could walk around with your generic little legs or rent or buy a DeLorean and travel around quicker in style. Now, I could be wrong, but I think that will be the progression. The gamers will start free to play, maybe start renting, then buying, and then the biggest and the hardest conversion is making them collectors. Each step won't have 100% conversion rates, but increasing that conversion is key. See, gaming, gaming will have some immediate impacts, some immediate positive impacts. It will increase retention in the overall Ecomi ecosystem and, and immediately impact the secondary market prices, which will benefit traders like myself. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, the thing is, Ecomi only makes 2.5% on secondary market sales. So the long-term big revenue for the company will be when they turn the gamers into collectors, when they actively participate in the primary market and actively try to move up in the master collector program. So what I'm trying to say is, I believe gamification, while profitable on its own, 
its biggest accelerator for revenue is not simply gaining users. It will be serving as the gateway to high margin products, kind of like a big parking lot where they have a fair. It's a parking lot before entering the Walmart of NFTs. Anyways, those are just my thoughts. After finding some interesting numbers, thanks so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and following. And I'll see you next time.